First of all, let's start at where everybody's at, no matter where they're at, which is, I want happiness. And raise your hand if you think that that's not what you want, which is fine. Another version of it is, I want to feel good. I want to be at peace. I want to experience tranquility, serenity, joy, bliss, excitement. I mean, if there was no desire along those lines, no desire to feel better, then you probably wouldn't be here. But the thing you think you might be after in life, perhaps your desire is to accomplish certain things. I want to know how to accomplish this. I want to know how to attain that. I want to know how to manifest this or that. But all of those are just indirect routes to the same desire. Basically, you want to know what you are. You want to know and feel and experience and reside in connection with that which you are. And every person will give this a different name based on their conditioning. But it's all the same thing. Like you're all here for the same reason. <clears throat> so from then, from there, something to understand or contemplate is the maturity with which you want happiness. The desire for happiness matures over time. Have you noticed? When you're a kid, it's wanting this flavor ice cream instead of that flavor ice cream. And if you don't get it, you'll fight really hard to get the flavor that you do want. Otherwise, you'll roll on the floor and you cry because you're unhappy. <clears throat> and then as you grow older, you kind of try to cover up this desire for costless joy with responsibilities. Because in a universe that's unhappy, and by universe in this case, I just mean planet Earth, because right outside the atmosphere, it's incredibly joyful. It's just this atmosphere that sucks, even though there's so much beauty here, so much perfection. So in a universe that's, that's unhappy, where everybody's unhappy, it becomes a sin to be happy. Now, we don't put it in these terms, but why are you not ridiculously happy? Or why do you tone it down when you're, say, with your family? Right? Sometimes you have moments where you're just so happy. But, you know, let's be cool. Let's be responsible. Let's not, uh, let's not be too happy. Actually, when I was in high school, we had this sort of uh, this uh, trendy thing we would say to each other. It's in Dutch. And it's uh, need to play. So we would, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that or if it was just my high school, but it was a cool thing to say, like, you know, if you're not cool enough, if you're too happy or you're too excited or you give something too much significance, we would say, hey, need to play, which means not too happy, okay? Not too happy. Let's not be too happy. That was like a trend for a while. But it's basically that concept that I'm talking about is... um like, if you're unhappy, then it's almost a sin for me to be happy in front of your face, no? It's kind of rude. It's kind of rude for me to enjoy God while you're suffering about your dying grandparents or parents and whatever is happening. Let's all be a little bit more unhappy so that those that are unhappy don't feel even more unhappy. There's some weird kind of agreement like that that we have. Now, I'm not saying you should be like over the top, dramatically exuberant all the time, um, because that kind of becomes a show also, right? And again, within the topic of maturing your desire for happiness, there's also a stage where happiness becomes, a, becomes an ego kind of a pat on your own back. Like, look at how happy I am or can be regardless of my circumstances. Um, which is fine if that's in the solitude of your own experience and there's a purity to that, like there's a joy and like a, a pleasure in a sense of reveling in the freedom that you're able to actually be happy in the midst of whatever circumstances you've got going on that typically you would call not so good. But if it becomes a show, if it becomes a identity, then again, it's time to mature a little bit at some point because then it's really not happiness. It's not as happy as it could be. 
So we grow up, we kind of suppress our causeless joy with responsibility towards others, blending in and not being too happy, need to play. We don't want to upset those that are unhappy after all. And those that are unhappy, usually because of their facial expressions, we think they somehow know more than we do. It's also a weird subconscious thing because they're serious. So there's authority in that, right? And so those unhappy people must know something I don't. The inner child goes like that. Well, look at all those serious faces. I, mean, I must be serious too, because they know something I don't know, right? They have an authority. They've attained something I have not attained. Which is not true necessarily, maybe some cases. But. So there's, there's all these weird little ways that we condition each other to not be happy. So be mindful of that. And then, then we try to fit that happiness inside of a sort of a paradigm of achievement for a lot of people or accomplishment. Because now that we've encapsulated ourselves within a bubble of seriousness and responsibility and life is hard and life should be heavy and you should work hard, you should fight hard, you should prove yourself. Now that we have that container and that association with uh, that only if it fits in that paradigm am I allowed to be happy? Am I allowed to feel happiness? It's only okay if it matches that sort of paradigm. So then what's the best thing available within that paradigm? It's success, typically, some form of success, outward success, usually. So we try to create happiness through success because success fits within the paradigm of we're not, not nobody's really happy and those that are serious no more and yeah let's take responsibility for everything so in that serious role then you know you start working and you start trying to get happiness from being successful and having certain attainments that you can show to other people that you can show up with and maybe um you want to buy some fun toys on the side some things you like or some uh, nice uh, vacation spots or a partnership it's a big one right the joy the happiness of someone else loving me because i forgot how to it's a whole other topic the non-existence of relationships but then as we mature it starts to sort of get into the spiritual domain if you want to call it that once an entity matures enough and what's maturing 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 is suffering typically um, it's rare for someone to mature a lot without suffering it's possible but it's rare Usually struggle, suffering, challenge is what mature says. Now it's possible to mature without that. And I actually encourage you to use the suffering that does appear in your life in such a way that it motivates you to remind yourself to learn lessons before shit needs to hit the fan. Because the reason shit hits the fan typically is because it wants to point you in the right direction. It wants to reorient your focus. But if you are able to reorient your focus in the early stages, if you can start to pick up on when things go a little south or you go a little off track, you go a little out of alignment, if you can pick up on those subtle sort of intuitive and emotional mental cues and you remember how much it sucked to suffer last time around, then you can motivate yourself without having to wait for the next cataclysm in your circumstances to remind you to pay attention and to take the action required to shift back into alignment. Make sense? So if you train yourself to pay attention, to learn faster, to learn more efficiently, to listen, to become a better listener to the signals that we could just say comes from your higher self, let's just say that. Uh, but you can say it in whatever way you want. But those su subtle impulses, if we can take these subtle cues and implement them, have the motivation to discipline to implement them based on our previous experience of how much it sucked to suffer, right? Like if anything, remember, it sucks to suffer because that will motivate you to take that information and realign yourself. Because when you realign yourself, then your circumstances don't have to. Smack, smack you in the face as often.